What's up, you guys? How you guys doing today? My name is JT, and welcome to the Secret to Great Anime Podcast. <laughs> Sorry to not mean to just burp in your ear like that, but um, I had a, just a really big bowl of green beans and some saltine crackers, so been kind of busy. What's been going on in your life? What's been going on with you, my man? If man, I want to really know what's been going on with you guys. Like, what TV shows have you been watching? Have you been eating those tasty Cheetos with a jalapeno pepper or whatever that is sprinkled on them? It tastes pretty good, actually. You know, I didn't used to like Cheetos like that, but, you know, well, now I'm on a vegan diet, so I can't eat them at all. But when I was a kid, I, n- I never really used to like Cheetos like that and because I was too broke to buy them at the store. But then when I did got money, that's when they started having it to where you couldn't find a 99 cent bag of Cheetos. You really had to spend like a dollar forty nine. And the thing about it is, after you get a certain amount of money, who really has 49 extra cents just in their pocket to buy Cheetos? Like, think about it. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But anyway, now to talk to you about anime. Um, today, we're going to be talking about ReZero, Return of Zero. We're going to be talking about episode 17 of that series, which, as you know, if you haven't heard any of my other podcast episodes, it is one of my most favorite animes ever to exist. I think it's one of the best ones out today. And also, I want to talk about Berserk episode 004, or episode 4. I just love saying 00 again. No, 000. 000. 000. I don't know, I'm stupid. But anyway, we're going to be talking about that one. And at the end, we're going to be talking about Devil May Cry. Um, they're talking about Capcom is possibly thinking about returning with another episode of Devil May Cry 4. So we're going to go hop into that. Um, first off, I want to say, do you watch Return of Zero? Do you know what program I'm talking about? Well, it realistically, uh, realistically, I named this episode ReZero Monday Madness or Monday Madness Podcast because I want to get in contact with the crowd of people who love Return of Zero. So, um, you know, that matters to me as well. So more than likely, you probably know what it is. And also, I love Berserk, so I know you probably know what that is. Um, but anyway... Return of Zero, very, very great show. Shout out to my man, Natsuki Subaru, who's the main character. You know, he a real nigga. I thought he was a bitch at first, but, you know, he's been keeping it hood for a while in the show. And episode 17, if you've been following me with me and you're a fan of the show, then you know how, um, you know, kind of like the scenario, how it is, is, you know, he comes, if he dies, he comes back to life in this world. It's kind of like a mix between Monster Rancher and, um, um, uh, Dragon Tales. In this world, he keeps coming back to life after he kills, he's killed or whatever, whatnot. And in the scenario that we're up to right now, yada, 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 he has this very beautiful turquoise haired girl who is in love with him and she's a maid. But then he also is, he's in one of those situations where you have that guy who's chasing after one girl, but the other girl really loves him. And in this episode, it hasn't gotten to a point where it's an open air conflict between him chasing um the maid girl whose name is rem and chasing the very um the main girl who's emilia sama or emilia i put the sama there because of friend but i noticed that like in this episode episode 17 they have it where the intro starts over in a different way so now you're kind of seeing now the intro of the show now starts with like this little you can see like a little bit of him having an indecision of between emilia and Rim. So now you're starting to see like, wow, you know, maybe he really might date Rim instead of Amelia. Which I wouldn't have a problem with because personally I prefer if this is just my opinion, you know, you might have a difference of opinion in this, but personally to me, I prefer I prefer in my opinion, I prefer uh Rim. I think Amelia is more pretty. I think Amelia is beautiful. But I think Rim has displayed more character and more sincerity than Amelia. I mean, Amelia has healed Natsuki, his um, healed Subaru up until this point. But I feel like she just displays a certain amount of more sincerity that I don't think um, Rim, uh, this Amelia has. Mm -hmm. And it was funny because if you remember, like, just seven episodes ago, 
He was getting killed by Rem in the force. Rem actually killed him. But now you see a twist in it to now she actually is in love with him. And it's, it's very interesting. It's very interesting to see that. What do you think about it? What do you think about the show's dynamic? Because I was noticing, like, when I went on Kiss Anime, and I was reading some of the comments that came from a lot of the people on there who said, you know, um, I like the show, I like, um, I like the show, but I think the the creator of the show is very sadistic. I think he's one of those people who's crazy and just wants to make his audience suffer trying to figure out what's going on. I noticed that a lot of people had said that, and it was cool. It, like, a lot of people feel kind of conflicted about the show, but I like it. I think the show's raw as hell. I think you should love it as well. Also, um, and big shout out also to my, sh- um, to my people also who commented and let me know how much they love the podcast on iTunes and my SoundCloud family, all of you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and making this podcast something that's great and enjoyable and giving me your opinions, giving me your feedback. All of that matters. All of that is important to me. I'm always interested in hearing what you, the fan, thinks. And with this, well, in episode 17, just to tell you more about the episode, um, you know, t- just to recap, um, now he's at a point, this part of the conversation is directed to those who I've been keeping up with the show, because I don't want you to feel confused if you never watched the show, but now we're at a point in the show to where um, he's whipped Rem, he's came back like for the 57th time, and he made a deal with these um, Oregon Trail pilgrim people to bring their carriages to the village that's going to be attacked by the witch cult, and to rescue the villagers there. But this giant mist whale-like nigga, he looks like Whalemon from Digimon, comes out and attacks the carriage and sends and kills half the other people. And Rem ends up leaving them in the carriage to try to fight the monster and stall them off. And once Subaru realizes, um, you know, she's gone, she knocked him out before she left. He wakes up in the carriage with the main guy, with the guy leading him away, and. Once he's there, um, once he wakes up, he gets into an argument with the guy who then kicks him off the off the trail thing because he realizes that the, 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 the whale is after him, not is after him rather than the guy leading the trail. So he kicks Subaru off and you have a very emotional moment that's just gut-wrenching when you see Subaru cry and really like just give out his real emotion like you see him really give out his real emotion like he starts crying and saying I don't want to die 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 he runs down the hill and for me I'm gonna be honest with you as a broadcaster and as an anime fan this show takes you this show takes you through so many different hills and steeps emotionally and mentally when you watch this show it's it's fascinating like I, I, it's, it's, it's very interesting. I, this sh- it's a very interesting concept. I think the show really, um, I think they're doing a good job with the show. I've always said in this podcast before, you know, you have a good show when the show makes you feel emotionally invested. And that's all that really matters to me. If the show is making you feel emotionally invested, then I feel like you have a good show. And the same way, that's the same way I feel about this show. Um, just to kind of hop off into another topic, uh, we're going to talk about Berserk. But first off, I want to tell you, if you have any opinions, again, about what I said about Subaru, about the relationship between him and Amelia Sama and Rim, simply let me know. Let me know. I want to hear what you guys have to say. I want to hear what my people have to say in the podcast. You can comment on my Instagram. You can comment on my Twitter. You can comment on this video or this audio track, whichever one you're listening to. And I want to hear you guys. I want to hear what you guys have to say. You know, overall, your opinion matters more than anything else in the world. So I've always been... <sighs> I'm a little bit tired. I've been a little bit busy. But I'm always interested in hearing what you have to say. Um, um, anyway, happened to hopping into Berserk. Berserk episode 4. Um... Berserk actually is becoming a really good anime, and it's actually growing on me. We're in Berserk episode 4 of the second season, and this far into the show, you have a situation pop up where he returns back to the cave where Rinka, Rinka, 
Re- re- Rekention, Rekention. The little, damn it, the little cute blonde headed boy, like a, the little cute blonde headed Haley Joel Osment looking boy. Anyway, the little cute little Haley J- blonde Haley Joel Osment looking boy is taking care of Costco at the moment. And co- they find out that Costco ran away. Um, Costco ran away to this group of pilgrimage people who are running away. There's like a group of bandits. And now Guts goes through this issue where now he's like, oh my god, Costa is gone. I left her here alone. And it's weird because the girl, the little little the little girl who hangs out with the Haley Joel Osment looking boy gets mad. And it's like, you know, you left her here by herself, yada yada yada. Well, left not by herself because they were there, but left her here. You didn't care for her and all that stuff. But my thing is like, she was so freaking scared of Guts when she saw him. It's like, why would you even want to stay? Why would you want to stay with somebody who's that fucking scared of you? Plus, you can't fuck her again because now she got the mind of a seven year old. You'd be basically committing rape. Like, and Casca's bad. Like, Casca's hella cute. I don't know what anybody, a lot of people were saying, like, I saw some comments saying she was ugly and I don't know, they don't know why they made her look like a nigger. Excuse my language. It's like, Casca's hella cute. No niggas is hating. Excuse my language. But anyway, so you later see her in this group of bandits, pilgrimage, whatever you want to call them. Who are attacked by Lady Farness and this guy. This, hold up, I gotta talk about this. So, Lady Farness um, has a pain fetish, a torture fetish. Lady Farness is one of those people who likes to see people get tortured, likes to people see people get hurt. And at the point in the show where they encounter this group of bandits, pilgrims, people, whatever you wanna call them, they have a. a Lady Farnes' holy knights or their holy kingdom, they have a lord called Lord Mosgus. Mosgus. He looks like a um he looks a lot like a pale apocalypse, like a pale pale faced apocalypse from X-Men. And when you see him come into the show, it's funny because when he gets mad at the like the bandits, first off, his his soldiers and arm his soldiers are, are these torturers, these people who are like dressed in black with these random ass weapons. They these niggas are with the shit. These niggas is not playing no game at all. The motherfuckers is attacking like raw. There was one guy who got this giant ass wheel where he uses it to crush people at, or he'll take the person's body on the wheel, turn the wheel to where their body is like. Like disfigured on the wheel, like these motherfuckers are serious with this. It. It's no game with them, and you see, like when the Lord has his soldiers torturing the townspeople, like the the pilgrim and bandits people. You see Lady Farness, like like pulling her collar and sweating and excitement, like she her pussy is literally getting wet from seeing people get tortured. It's very weird to see that happen. And, you know, I always wonder if there are people... Well, of course there are people like that. Of course there are people like that. There's no way in hell there aren't people like that. I think in this show, what makes it so fascinating is... They always say, I love shows that aren't afraid to push it to the extreme. And this show pushes it to the far most extreme I'm talking about far most I'm talking about to the point where you feel like you're going to throw up to the point where you feel like you might hurt to the point where it just pushes it and I love that about this show it's it's fascinating you know um, it's just a great show and I want you to tell me what do you think about the show what do you think about it how do you feel about the show you know, I personally... And who are your favorite characters? Do you like Puck? Do you like Guts? Do you like Casca? Of course, I love Casca. And I'm not just saying that because she looks like a purple-haired Halle Berry to me. But I love Casca. I might be saying that because she does, in fact, look like a purple-haired Halle Berry. And it's okay. But um, I, I love the show. I feel like the show's great. I feel like... Is bringing back a feel. I, I feel like it's one of those shows that really should be the face of anime today. You know, and you have shows like that that are out there that are good. Like Cabinet of the Iron Fortress was is a good competitor, but the first season of that show just ended recently, so you have to get your your high off somewhere else. 
But anyway, that's what I was talking about. We talked about Berserk and Reset Return of Zero. I want to hear you guys' opinion about that. My people, I want you guys to let me know what you think. But also, I want to talk about Devil May Cry. And a lot of you guys are familiar with Devil May Cry. That's one of the most excellent video games I've ever played in my life. Um, I never played the first and second one. I played the fourth, fifth, the fourth, fifth, and third. And I spent the weekend, I spent this last weekend, um, watching, just watching the episodes, watching the video game movies over and over and over again. And I fell in love with the game again. I fell in love with the game again. I, it was cool that I fell in love with the epic, with particularly with Devil May Cry 4. I love the character Nero, who has the devil bring your arm. Excuse me, excuse me, I just burped. But I love the character Nero. He has the devil bring your arm, which is very sexy as hell. I've always, I love the Devil May Cry franchise in itself because it brings a part of demonic slash Christian culture slash war, di- modern day warfare. I love this. I love the concept of the show of the the video game in itself like even how you have Dante who's a devil hunter and you have him in the modern world with this giant sword these two beautiful guns ebony and ivory in perfect harmony some of you might be too young to remember that song it's actually a very 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 interesting song Um, it was sung by uh, I think it was Elton John about 20 years ago talking about racial harmony between black and white people um, but anyway I like how you have that I like how I always like show shows where you have the modern world and you have this contrasting world with the demon with the demonic influence with the demons who are attacking or who are trying to um, take over your world or take over the world and in Devil May Cry you have this as an influence and it's amazing to me you know how you have the it's amazing to me I like let me particularly, particularly what's amazing to me about it is I like I like okay this is gonna sound kind of gay I like sexy body parts in a video game like for example with Nero you see how Nero has the devil bringer arm and devil may cry four and it's like half demon arm but it can do this thing where it has like the spiritual um claw like things extend forward and use extra strength to grab monsters and slam them or choke them or um or even when he does his devil trigger which releases his devil demon form the arm embodies like this ghost of sparta to some extent with the yamato sword which is virgil sword and he's sending like these sword summon sword swoops like whoosh. i love sexy body parts and so that aspect of it I fell in love with because it reminded me a lot of Kazuma from Scryde. Another thing I like about it too is I like Dante's personality. You know, so cocky and flamboyant and I don't give a fuckish. You know, plus he has his own little style with his coat and his sword and his guns. I really am very I'm very passionate about this show. I think I'm about this video game series. Now, it also had a show, too, as well, which was... The, the show was very underrated because it actually was pretty tight. You know, it actually was very, very well. Very, very good show. I think the only issue I'd say with the game is they just haven't made a new one. You know, they haven't made a new one since um, Devil May Cry DMC Devil May Cry came out for PS3 and Xbox 360 in 2013. But interestingly, that was a remake of the first one. And before I started this podcast today, I actually read the, um, I actually watched the first one. I actually watched the, I uh, watched, um, watched the first Devil May Cry video game movie, which is, I watched like these video, to explain again when I say video game movie. I watched these full video game movies on YouTube that are video game full movies of like the cutscenes in the in the game, and I was comparing the voice actors from Devil May Cry One to Devil May Cry the Revamp that came out three years ago, and 
the voice acting in Devil May Cry, the very, very first one, was terrible. I like Dante's personality. I like the the the, pink, the personality that they gave him, but in the first one, his voice actor was terrible. Even the narrator's voice was terrible. But when you have the newer one, where you have him start off as a character with um, midnight black hair and beautiful facial features and just this cool swag, more badass, pure, pure badass type of style of conversation, he's the voice actor is on point. And it's very, very well. Did a very good job. And I've made a note of trying. I've been trying for like for the first half of this podcast to get more voice actors to talk to you guys. But I've been so busy just doing everything else. I'm, I'm at a point now to where I feel like I'm going to stop trying to focus on bringing guests on the show on either of my podcasts. And I'm just going to focus on talking to you and establishing a relationship with you. Because I feel like that's the best way to do it. I feel like I can't keep just trying to bring attention to bring attention because then nobody gets to know me. So, with that being said, um, I want you guys to give me your opinions about this episode. If I did a bad job with explaining the scenarios and laying it out, I apologize about that. I promise you, that'll never happen again. I love the audience that I have with this podcast. I love you guys. I love anime. And also, this was the prior, um, the week following after the San Diego Comic Con. So, if you attended that, or if you know anything about what happened there as far as anything that's going on, I want you guys to tell me. I want you guys to let me know what's going on in your world. So, with that being said, my name is JT. It's been a pleasure talking to all of you guys. This has been the Secret to Great Anime Podcast. Make sure you follow me. Like and subscribe to this podcast. It's been all love. Thank you.